how's it going YouTube? Tomorrow is the big day of the announcement, so I will be sure to cover a lot of what I think about the announcements and hopefully they do talk about some of the big meta shifts that will be upcoming. So everyone should hope that the league will be an amazing success and that we'll be experiencing all new endgame. So for today's video, I wanted to talk about how I personally made all of my currency which was like in the realm of like multiple mirrors every league. Just because it goes to show you that you can play the game in so many different ways. Because in each of these leagues, I'll go over the past four leagues I played, which is Harvest League, Heist League, Ritual League, Ultimatum League. You can play with a friend, you can play by yourself, but as long as you find one source of currency making method and you stick to it, anyone can pretty much like get a mirror as long as they have some amount of time to play. And... A lot of it is just finding that one method and really sticking to it. If you can find a method that'll make you like 5x per hour or 6x per hour and you keep at it and you fully invest into it, sooner or later, like 30 hours or 40 hours or so of doing that method, right? You would farm up 200x and you could buy a mirror. And that's pretty much just like a lot of people's baselines for achievements for the league is like being able to obtain that much currency. So I just wanted to go back through history and go over each of these four last four leagues and what we actually did or I did in order to obtain all my currency for the league. So I first started playing like PoE more seriously because I tried to stream, started streaming was in Harvest League and Harvest League was a pretty interesting league. It was the first league that actually added iterative crafting to the game in that you could slowly improve your items because you could remove something and then re-add it. So this means that this league one of the biggest things was trying to make mirror items. Like usually in most leagues, one of the biggest currency generators is always trying to make a mirror item. A mirror item is like buying real estate and people paying you rent over time, over and over again. So they're pretty much paying you rent to use your item, except you make a copy for them and then you go about your way. So once you make a mirror item that some people want to mirror, then you pretty much don't even need to play the game anymore because every time you what's it called every time you wake up in the morning you'll get like a mirror fee of like 50 to 100x because most of the time the mirror fee is pegged to the price of a mirror so usually you'll get like 0.2 mirrors every day or two or three and it really depends on what item you have so in this league we made a bow we knew that we wanted to make a bow because there is no perfect fizz bow with synthesized implicits on standard and the bow we ended up making was called Onslaught Branch. I don't even know if... So this is like the bow. So this bow here, someone's actually trying to sell it. That can't be right. But this bow here has the synthesized implicits of 7 to 10 fizz, 40% cold damage, and bows fire an additional arrow. So in this league, we recognized that in Harvest, they were able to add back synthesize back into the game. And this was through a T4 yellow seed. So if you took a spine bow... And then you use the Horde Crafting Station to make it synthesize. It can have a chance to get three mods on it. So we pretty much just decided that for this one league, our main goal was to make as many mirror items as possible because it's kind of cool to have it. And it's actually the best currency making method. And back then, I really kind of like enjoyed crafting and it was kind of interesting trying to see who can make the best item in the game that would get the most mirror copies. So this item was actually made through dumb luck in that we did only 50 bows and ended up with this. So some of the best mods on the bow for Implicit is bows fire an additional arrow. And then being able to get 7 to 10 flat fizz along with another usable third mod is just absolutely crazy. And then as everyone knows, Harvest was super easy to make any item. So you can see that this is like T2 hybrid, T1 merciless, and then flaring, and then two additional arrows, and then attack speed. So like the actual stats on the bow are absolutely a joke to roll once you get the base. So in this league, in Harvest League, all of the expensive items that were mirrored in the end were because they were synthesized and they had insane bases. So you could have like explode wands and stuff like that or explode foil with like flat fist and attack speed. So throughout the course of Harvest League, this was probably the league that I was the richest in. I think this item was probably mirrored over like 150 to 200 times or something. And at one point, we probably had like, I don't even know, like 100 mirrors because of all the currency we got from multiple mirror projects. 
We also tried to make a mirror foil, but it never really worked out. So you can see that making these items are complete RNG at times, but usually if you keep trying at something, you will end up getting some sort of result. Because we also made a VD wand that had flat fire, or VD wand that had explode on it that we crafted out. And that one was also mirrored a few times. So pretty much in Harvest League, most of our currency came from making synthesized items and getting fees from the mirror. So the next league, we have Heist League. Now Heist League, I know, is a league that a lot of people dislike. And Heist League was actually a league that we played hardcore on. I played hardcore personally. I also play an Aura Stacker again. But I always started off with an Aura Bot. Even in Harvest League, I was an Aura Bot at the start. If you're trying to play an Aura Stacker, the best way to start the league off is to find a friend. I know that's usually pretty hard to find nowadays. But if you can find a friend, an aura bot into an aura stacker start is by far the best and nothing really comes close as long as your friend and you are on the same page and you have pretty similar sleep schedules. So High League was kind of interesting. Since you're on hardcore, you can pretty much make infinite currency so easily as long as you follow this one rule, which is stay alive. If you die in hardcore, it's a disaster. You lose everything, literally, that's on your character. So you could be set back days. But with great risk also comes great rewards. So any bossing that you do in heist or in hardcore is infinitely more profitable. And the bosses are always profitable throughout the whole course of the league because there's always items exiting the economy because of people dying. Now, in heist, I actually did not end up dying that much at all. I had a level 100 aura stacker, so that means that I was able to generate a lot of currency. Now, heist was also a league that had Zana Delirium on the map device, so for the majority of the league, I pretty much just spent my time doing tropical islands, putting Delirium Mirror on the map for 20 chaos, and then collecting like 160 splinters at the end, which ended up selling for, I don't even know how much it sold for. It probably sold for like, I don't know, the whole simulacrum probably sold for like 3 exalts on hardcore. So pretty much it would take like 3 maps to get 3 exalts. And then you also get a bunch of other stuff to sell and bases. Oh yeah, and hardcore bases sell really well. So if you put an Elder Scarab on the map, you would get Elder Helmet, which would sell for like 20 Chaos. Or Shaper Scarab, and you would get Shaper Titaniums, which would sell for an insane amount. So every single map would be like almost an exalt or two in profit. And if you just keep doing it over the course of days, you are able to make a lot of money. So for hardcore, any method would generally work. And there's also one other thing I ended up doing. So there's something called a secondary regrading lens in Heist. And what this does is that it changes the quality of a skill gem to another random quality. So this is actually one of the big gems in Heist, which is Divergent Determination. Now this gem went for around like 30x or so in hardcore. While Anomalous Determination went for like 20 or... I don't even know. It went for like 50 chaos or so. And then the Prime Regrading Lens was a 1x. So if you did the math simply, you just buy an Anomalous Determination and you buy the Prime Regrading Lens and it's a 1 in 6 chance to get a Divergent Determination because you block off the chance because you can't use the Regrading Lens and get an Anomalous Determination again. So by knowing the weights of this and using the orb on it, you're pretty much able to spend like, what's it called, like 6x or 10x and have like a 30x payout. And if you just kept, kept repeating it over and over again, you would just pretty much make infinite money. And the only thing that would stop you is the supply of the anomalous determinations and the primary grading lens. Now this is something that people didn't really know about early on. So like I said in the previous video about how to make money, knowledge is pretty much power. And knowledge is honestly the best thing you could possibly have in terms of PoE money making. And this med money making method was insane. And I sold, I don't even know, like 20 to 30 divergent determinations in hardcore for like 20 to 30x. So that's pretty much how I made the majority of the profit. Although a large portion of the profit in Heisley was also from just running delirium maps, delirium tropical island maps and never dying. So then we move on to Ritual League. Now Ritual League was a big expansion league. They have the invitations. And again in this league, I started off with an Aura Bot with my friend and eventually went into an Aura Stacker. Now at the start of the league, what we decided to do was we knew that Legion was on the map device again. So the similar theme is that you want to know what's on the map device and what you could exploit early on. 
So Legion's on a map device, right? So we knew we looked through all of the nodes for the Atlas passive trees, and we saw that this stuff was super overpowered, right? Because you would get Timeless Splinters has a chance to drop an emblem, and pretty much Legion emblems are always worth a lot at the start of a league. And then back then, this node was a lot better. So what we did was we got to end game really fast. We bought Legion Scarabs, and then we also put Legion on the map and then we spammed this region over and over again for the Dunes map and then we were able to make like 2 to 3x per map. And then we found out Auspicious worked with Mirror Shards and it was kind of bugged. So then we started running Canyons and we were pretty much averaging like 1 Mirror Shard per hour. But in the end, there's also the Watchstone imprinting exploit that people were doing but the majority of our currency was from Fear Multiboxing. So what that means is that nowadays you can't share the fear anymore so people in the party do not get credit. Before if you did a Cortex and you have five people in the party everyone would get credit for like witnessing the Cortex kill. So nowadays only the party owner or the person who puts in the map got credit. But before the party credit was shared so what that meant was that we would have five alt accounts or me and my friend would play and then we have four alt accounts between the two of us. And then every Cortex and Fear set that we did, that means we had five or uh, six total Fears to do. So that means like by buying one Cortex, one Cheyula, one Uber Aziri, and one Uber Elder set, we would get six Feared invitations to do, which is just insane because that means you have six times the boss drop rate. And this method was pretty much making a mere plus a day or more. Actually, probably like 1.5-ish mirrors a day, depending on how long we want to play. You could probably even make like two mirrors if you played all day. Now, this method is another demonstration of why knowledge is everything. Like, no one was doing this method at the start. And then eventually people caught on because Path of Math made a video about it. So if you want to see like what happened to... What's it called? The price of Bottle Faith, which is one of the inputs or the outputs of the method. You can see that in the beginning, people didn't really know about it. And then after people found out about it, it just dropped slowly as more and more people were able to do the weird multiboxing. Now, this method is currently nerfed. So I guess that's a good thing because if multiboxing exists, it really makes solo play a lot less valuable. And it means that no one would ever really do the fear under any circumstance unless you were actually multiboxing too. So you can see that this league... Again, it's the same scenario. We found a method from the map device and then we came up with a method that only we had the knowledge of for a brief time. And then we were able to execute it and make a lot of currency. And we also found two mirrors as drops into fear. So I don't know what to make of that. And then we have the current league, the best league yet. The greatest of all time league, Ultimatum League. My favorite personal league. Not really, but... This was the first league that I was playing solo because my friend had to work. So what this means is that everything is different when you're solo. You don't have a trader anymore with you. You can't really have all the currency at the start to buy stuff because you don't have two players worth of currency. But again, same strategy applied. It was pretty obvious when you see the Zana map device from the outset, and it didn't really change the Atlas passive trees that much. That Essence and Breach were going to be really good because they were extremely cheap. And then, obviously, if you spend two Chaos, you'll just be able to get much more money out of it. So what I ended up doing was that I looked through the Atlas passive tree. I saw that, oh, this gives additional Essence. And then this area for Lyra Ardain also gives a lot more breaches and a lot more rare monsters. And rare monsters are what drops the breach splinters. So what that meant was that I would get to map super fast. I would get my bonus up and then I would go to this region. I buy the watchstone so that the breach would have a higher chance to be Unatol and Cheula or Zoth. And then I pretty much just spammed the breach which would cost 2 chaos on the map device and get uh, fragments out of the map that was equal to like 40 chaos or so. And I'll also do some essence on the side. And then at the same time, I would be killing Awakener. Now, obviously this method was a lot less profitable overall than the previous methods in the previous leagues. And not only was it because I wasn't solo, it was also because that GGG just nerfed everything to the ground. 
So all the money making methods in Ritual League was pretty similar overall besides people crafting, or not Ritual, in Ultimatum League was besides people crafting stuff or I think five ways was also really good money, but five ways are also really good money every single league. But basically Ultimatum League leveled the playing field and made all the money making methods pretty similar in maxing out around like five exalts per hour. If you made like five to ten exalts per hour, you were already doing very well. Now later on in Ultimatum League, I also moved on to doing Valdo's Harbinger, but eventually the Winged Harbinger Scarab went from like 50 Chaos to 1 Exalt. And at the same time, I know that people really want to Ashling, and that Betrayal was super easy to do if you had a lot of Betrayal missions. So I would stock up Betrayal missions in Hamlet while running Essences, and then use the missions in Valdo's because you would get a uh, 100% chance to gain an additional rank and then I would do Katarina and this was also very profitable before more and more people started doing it and then after that I felt like oh there's nothing really to do so then I did the last thing which was doing inscribed ultimatums now pretty much what this means is that I would go on a trade site and then I had this like trade thing right here right so this is like all of the exalted orb ones so I would have a live search going. I was like try to buy up the ones that was like, underpriced. So if you see one here that's like, oh, you're buying one for like eight exalts. Wow, there's literally no one playing this league. This is just sad. So basically, if you look in the past, let's see, 812 people. But I guess this league is almost done. So don't need to be expected. So basically, you buy one of these inscribed ultimatums and then you would sacrifice. So you people usually sold these for like seven exalts right or six exalts if it was kind of hard so what this means is that you put in eight, you buy it for six exalts you put in your eight and then you get eight exalts out of it now this usually takes like two to three minutes to do and then you make a two exalt profit so you're pretty much only limited by how many of these you can buy and how many of these you can run per hour and some of these become riskier and riskier you can do a mere inscribed ultimatum which is what i did to get my helmet and then you can even do a head under one, which would probably net you like 20 to 30x per one you do. Now, this is also how I made the rest of my currency. And yeah, I didn't really do any crafting or flipping in, ult in Ultimatum League because I just wanted to play the game. And it's a lot more annoying without a partner to do it. But basically, this is inscribed ultimatums, I believe, were some of the best money I had because I was able to make like. 10 to 15 exalts sometimes per hour. Sometimes some people would completely misprice something. For instance, some people sold like uh, the nurse one for like six exalts when the doctor was only was like 18 exalts or something. Some people just like completely misprice it, especially for the div card ones. So this is pretty much like flipping almost and trying to find out like a pricing discrepancy. But overall. Oh yeah, and in the end, in Ultimatum League, I also tried some 5-way carries, and that one was pretty good. It was like 15x per hour, but it was also annoying having to do the same thing over and over again. But Ultimatum League was definitely a league that I tried a lot of different methods, purely because no method was really that great, because GGG really did nerf everything like they said they would. So yeah... I hope that helps everyone understand like how every single league is kind of different, right? And there's always like different ways to make currency. So some leagues you have the crafting league, some leagues you play, and then some leagues like you just are in hardcore, so you just make currency as long as you stay alive. So there's so many different ways to play the game. There's a lot of different ways to make currency. And in the end, the most important thing is that knowledge is power. So anyhow, I'm going to take a look at GGG's tweet and give some last minute predictions and for end the video. Tomorrow is the big announcement and they posted this last thing, fear not exile, your suffering soon ends. So the way I take it is when I play PoE generally, I'm usually spamming a lot of my flash, right? So I'm going to get RSI, I'm clicking a lot of stuff. So when he means your suffering soon ends, I interpret that as they're going to do a flask overhaul. And then they're also gonna have an auto loot pet that I can buy. But that's just my predictions for what they mean by this. Or they just mean that this is the new boss and that it's gonna kill me and end my suffering. But this guy definitely needs to work on his legs. Because you can see that he has very skin le skinny legs, so do not skip leg day. So in terms of an announcement, the uh, live stream will start at 1pm. So I will be streaming live on Twitch. 
and reacting to it. And then I guess they're going to do some... There are some other big reveals contained within the live stream that you're likely not expecting. So that probably means that PoE 3 might be coming out or PoE Mobile will be coming out. I don't really know. I don't even know what happened to PoE Mobile actually because thought it was supposed to come out a while ago. But on the sad front is that there will be no drops on Twitch this time around. So there's no way to get a free Angel Wing this time like last time. But I hope you tune into my stream. I will be watching it. And if you like the content, be sure to like and subscribe. I hope this video helped you out in understanding like how to judge what the best money making methods usually will be at the start of the league. And in the end, check your map device, see what the Zana crafting options are and look at the Atlas passive tree and see what is the best region to do it on. And stick to one strategy because sticking to a strategy is pretty good because you can fully invest into it and then you will be able to make multiple mirrors in a league. But thanks for watching everyone and I hope you find or make more mirrors and exhaust than I do and see you next time.